Hello everyone and welcome back to the Slay With Shay platform, the platform that aims to encourage and empower people when it comes to their financial well-being, their career and lifestyle choices. If you're new to my platform, thank you so much for being here <laughs> um, and welcome, of course, welcome to the family and please do hit the subscribe button. So I've decided to start a new segment to this platform and I'm calling it The Rich Chronicles. And the reason for that is because I was originally going to call it the Broke Chronicles, <laughs> but we are not using that word anymore in 2020. We are not giving life to the word broke. Yeah. Okay. We're all rich in Jesus name, even through our moments of financial struggles. That is just temporary. That is just the season on the way to riches. Yeah. That's what we're saying from now on. We are not pronouncing brokenness on our lives anymore. But the reason why I um, wanted to create this segment is because I want to start telling, to basically have like story time segments. So essentially I'm going to tell stories of some of the situations I found myself in during my period of financial difficulty. And I kind of want it to be like a lighthearted reflection. So whilst I'm definitely not here to make light of financially difficult situations or people who are struggling etc that, that's definitely not what I'm trying to do I'm simply just going to be talking about some of my experiences that I'm able to now look back on and laugh a little bit um, but at the time of course it was distressing and anyone going through anything like that like anything I'm going to talk about of course it is distressing so I'm not making light of it in any way but I do kind of want to use this opportunity to kind of tell some of these stories just to kind of like yeah like I said have a light-hearted kind of reflection on how I used to be some of the situations I found myself in and also to be able to kind of identify the growth from those situations and to talk about kind of how I bounced back from them the things I did differently to never find myself in those situations again so I'll try and upload these videos perhaps maybe once a week, um, just kind of telling the story of these kind of situations. Uh, I don't know how many I'm going to do, just depends on when I run out of stories, I guess. But yeah, um, so this will be the Rich Chronicle segment of the Slay With Shay platform. The first story that I want to tell is my bailiff experience. Yes, I said bailiff. It was an experience and a half and the reason I really want to share this story is because I feel like again it's part of my growth and it's part of um, the way in which I want to kind of be transparent on this platform it's part of kind of you know wanting to identify the ways in which I have moved from those kind of behaviors that I had before and also to give people advice on how they can avoid finding themselves in a similar situation so yeah this might be a long one, so maybe grab your tea, grab your biscuits, because yeah, I'm about to tell a story. <laughs> so it all started on one fateful day when I was out with my mum, driving with my mum, and she needed me to stop somewhere. Now, this particular place was a red route, so there was like a red box and you know the red signs that basically say no stopping. And she was like, no, 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 it's fine. You can stop there as long as, you know, you're in the car and it's okay. We're not going to be long. I literally am just going to pick something up. And truth be told, she was really quick. She was literally in and out of that shop, wherever it was. But I was like, mum, are you sure I'm not going to get a ticket? Because it does say no stopping at any time. And she was like, no, 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 trust me, it's fine. Uncle so-and-so, he used to work, work as a parking attendant, so I know all the rules. And I was like, I don't know who told me to listen to her, but I was like, okay, fine. My mum says I'm not going to get a ticket and it's all good, so fine, it's, it's all good, right? A couple of weeks later, I get the letter in the post saying that I've got a ticket for stopping on the red route. So I was just like, well, mum, this is your fault. So this is your responsibility. Like, you're the one that got me this ticket, so I'm not paying it. And yeah, she was like, yeah, fine, you know, I was wrong. I take responsibility for it. I'll pay it. I'll sort it out. Don't worry. So I was like, okay, mum, you know, like on there you know they usually say they give you about two weeks or whatever it is so she was like yeah, yeah yeah fine sorted i'll do it those two weeks passed or whatever the duration it was that they give you passed i get another letter basically saying it's doubled because i didn't pay the amount i was supposed to pay before so i was like okay mum, now you're mugging me because now it's even gone up and she's like don't worry don't worry i get another letter again so at this point i was like i don't know why i thought that i could just like leave it in the hands of my mum because clearly she don't rate me in it, like, so it's not going to be paid. So let me just sort it out the way I should have sorted it out in the beginning. So yeah, I call up the, the number and they're like, okay, we can set you up on like a payment arrangement, basically, because at that point it had gone up 
by double. It wasn't even like the cheap £60 parking tickets, you know, it was like, I can't remember, I just remember it being like more than £200 or so in total anyway, um, or coming up to that, so maybe like 150 or something like that, I don't know, I can't remember, but whatever it was, it was a lot of money for little old, I was just about to say broke, little old rich me back then. <laughs> It was a lot of money so yeah um the guy on the phone he set up like a little repayment plan for me and he was like yeah you can pay i think it was like 60 pounds a month or something like that to pay it off and it well whatever amount it was it would have taken me three months he said that he was going to set up a direct debit for me the first month he didn't if the direct debit wasn't set up i actually called up and made the payment the second month i cannot for the life of me remember if there was a direct debit or not but the second month payment was made now the final month so again, because I can't remember if there was a direct debit set up or not, or if I was supposed to call up and make the payment, basically the payment never got made and I never heard from them. So I was thinking, oh, perhaps they've even forgot about it. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. So I just left it because trust me, this was, let's say this was, um, I want to say it had happened the year before. So um, let's say it happened like November the year before. This was about like February times. Yeah, about February, March times of that, of the following year. And um, yeah, I hadn't heard anything. So I was just like, cool. <laughs> if they don't call me, I'm not calling them kind of thing. I'm not exactly in a rush to necessarily like give them this money for this ticket that wasn't even my fault. So anyway, so months went past now. So the day before the whole Bailey thing, and the reason why I have to tell the story of the day before is because I want you guys to really understand the amount of L's that I took the day before this whole thing happened, right? The universe was definitely against me that 24 hour period. So anyway, the day before there was like a book launch that I was going to with my friends. I drove down and it was in central London and where I parked, I looked, I'm sure I definitely checked like the restrictions and stuff. And I believed that I could park there and it was directly outside the venue. So I thought perfect, like convenient parking space, right? In there at the book launch, it turned into like a little party afterwards. Everyone was having fun, music was good. So I'd come out in good spirits, right? Came out, saw the parking ticket. Bearing in mind, I'm sure I already had, so aside from the parking ticket um, that I just described, I had another parking ticket from like Morrison's car park or something. And at this point I'm like, is it is it only me? Like, am I just jinx when it comes to parking tickets? Like, am I the only person that just does not know how to park? Like, what is actually my problem? At this point, I was just so frustrated with myself. Like, is it only you? So yeah, so obviously when I got in the car, I was obviously just so irritated because I just thought, ugh, another parking ticket. And, you know, like I said, I was rich back then. So I wasn't really happy to have to be paying for another parking ticket. So anyway, on top of that now, um, one of my friends that was with me, she lived in East London. And um, so, yeah, basically some, there was a mix up with how she was getting home, essentially. I think dad was supposed to come and pick her up, but then he last minute couldn't. So of course, I'm not going to leave her to go all the way back to East London from central London by herself. So I offered to drop her back. So those of you who might be familiar with the A13, now there's a part on the A13, I don't know if it's still there because I haven't driven on there in a little while, but back then there was a part where literally it drops from 50 to 30 in like rapid speed. And you have to be quick with it because if not, that camera is flashing your ass. <laughs> so yeah, I literally must have been, maybe because I was still thinking about my parking ticket, I don't know, but I must have whizzed through that part at 40 miles per hour and I just saw a flash. So at this point, I'm like, hold on a minute. First of all, I just got this parking ticket. Now I'm probably gonna get points and another parking ticket, because I'm sure you get like some kind of fine as well if you the speed. So I thought, oh God, like on top of the ticket, I'm now expecting another ticket to my house plus points. After I've been a really good driver all this time and I've avoided ever getting points and this is my fate. I said, no, 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 somebody, somebody doesn't like me today, yeah? So I've dropped my, fr my friend off now, driving back, and all of a sudden, I hear like a little clip on my left side of the car. So I'm like, what's that? Didn't really think anything of it. Driving now, as soon as I got into Rotherhive Tunnel, all I heard was a bang. The tire just exploded in Rotherhive Tunnel. And those of you who have driven in Rotherhive Tunnel, you know how narrow that tunnel is. So I was literally stuck in there, essentially. And I was just like, what am I gonna do? There's not even reception in here. Like, <laughs> what am I actually going to do? 
And eventually I ended up calling for breakdown cover. Turns out my breakdown cover didn't cover such eventualities. So I had to call a private company to come and tow me out of the tunnel and refix my tire and everything. And it was just a whole palaver. And again, I had to pay out for that as well. So yes, remember, rich girl, remember? So yeah, all of that is adding up in my head. And I'm like, this was the worst night ever. Like, how? Like, how have all these things happened? And all of it, including the car as well. To be honest, I'm starting to think maybe that car was jinxed, you know, because, I mean, really? Anyway, so at this point, of course, after my long, horrible night, I just get into bed and I'm like, you know what? I just want to forget about this night. Sorry, I missed, an, I missed an important part. So where I used to live, basically, on my road, there was there wasn't free parking on my road but behind my road on like a side street there was free parking which was like about a minute or two walk from my house I would usually park there because obviously I want the free parking but sometimes if I was feeling super lazy or if I'd come back from like a late night I would park on my road but I would make sure that I wake up on time to move the car to that free parking because sometimes that free parking would even be packed as well so yeah this particular night I was just not in the mood I just parked right in front of my house because at this point I just wanted to get in bed. I just wanted to, to just sleep away the night that I just had, right? This is important parts of this story, yeah? So anyway, the next morning I'm like, okay, obviously I need to go and move the car, etc. For some reason I was kind of dragging my feet that morning. And anyway, so I heard the buzzer go. I pick up the buzzer and the person on the buzzer is asking for me. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, you know, how can I help you sort of thing? And then he's like, yeah, I've just camped your car, mate. And I'm just like, huh? <laughs> so obviously at this point, I'm thinking, wait, did my car get clamped because I parked where it's not free parking? You're skipping several steps here. Surely I should just get a, another ticket to add to already my many list of tickets. But in my mind, I was thinking, how can you clamp me just for that? Wasn't thinking bailiff or anything like that. I was just thinking like, this is a bit extreme. So I come downstairs and the guy's there and he's just like, yeah, I'm from whatever they say, you know, with the bailiff um, speech. And he's like, yeah, basically, you know, you committed a uh, traffic offence on so-and-so day. You didn't make your um, payment. You didn't pay it off. So basically, you need to pay me £400 now. Or if you don't pay me that £400, I'm going to take your car to the pound. And you have to pay £800 to get it out. Plus £20 a day for each day it's in there. And you've only got five days to do that. So, yeah. Um, at this point, I'm like, well, <laughs> goodbye car. <laughs> It was nice knowing you um, because who had £400 at that time, let alone £800 if they were going to take the car, obviously wanted to keep my car. And the reason why I say like there was just so many L's with this car for that 24 hour period is because usually I would have parked on that road. And the way they found the car is obviously because they must have put my address in to find it. If I had parked on that road like I usually do, they wouldn't have found my car to clamp it. So even if they did come to my door, like whatever, they wouldn't have been able to clamp my car. They wouldn't have found it. I would have just said, well, my car's not here. It's somewhere else or whatever. But yeah, the one time that I'm like, okay, let me just park in front of my house because all your girl wants to do right now is sleep. That's the day the bailiffs want to come. I will never forget that day. Anyway, digressing. So I'm pleading with this guy and I'm like, I don't have it, like what are my options, etc. And he's like, there isn't any, you were already offered a payment plan and you broke that. So you need to pay the 400 pounds like right now, this second. And I'm just like, what? So I'm crying, I'm texting friends. I'm like calling people, like seeing if anyone can help me with a little 50 pound here, 100 pound there, seeing what I can do. At that time, everyone else has got their own situation. So there wasn't like a lot they could really do. Um, I call my mum and my mum was like, no, 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 because my mum was at work at this point. So I give my, my mum was like, can he, can she speak to the guy? So I give the phone and then the, my mum's on the phone. Like I could hear her on loudspeaker pleading with him like, please, please, she's a student. And the guy's like, well, it doesn't matter if she's a student. She should have thought about that before she committed the offence. I'm just like, first of all, these bailiffs here, yeah, I don't know what military training they get yeah, But when I say the way I cried and begged and sobbed, and when I say this guy's face didn't even move an inch, like he did, the way I was crying was like someone died and he literally didn't even, the training I get, they get, yeah, honestly, hats off to them because I don't know how someone could be breaking down like that in front of you and you're just like a stone, you don't care. Even my mum's on the phone breaking down and you don't care. <laughs> and um, in the end, at this point, I said, was just about to say goodbye to the car. And then I remembered that there was someone who probably could help me, that I was 
at the time, very reluctant to reach out to. It was my ex-boyfriend at the time. Um, so I had to literally go with my tail between my legs and call him and be like, this is the situation, can you help me? He did, um, which was obviously very, very nice of him. And very embarrassing for me because, like I said, that was my ex. So it's like having to run back to someone who you're no longer with to help you out of a financial situation. <laughs> I don't wish that on anyone. Um, but yeah, so after that it was paid and they unclamped my car and that was it. But yeah, um, <laughs> the reason I wanted to tell that story was because forget that all the L's that I took the day before, the day before with the light and the, oh, I actually didn't even end up getting a ticket or points actually. Apparently that was a warning flash, which I didn't know that that was such a thing. So I was convinced that I had points. So that day was like one of the worst days of my life because I just thought, all I did was go to a book launch. <laughs> like, how has my life ended up like this? Um, but yeah, but what I really, really took away from that experience was one, having like, you know, being in a situation where you just don't have any money at all is never kind of like where you wanna be for too long. And sometimes it just can't be helped. Like I said, I was struggling financially. I was young. I managed my money poorly, like I've explained in my previous videos, etc. But I feel like that was a very pivotal moment for me as well, because it was like, okay, but Shay, if you weren't able to get help, like you literally would have lost your car. Like your car would have been impounded and you wouldn't have been able to afford to get it out. That's a problem in so many ways. And it's not even so much about the car because the car's like a material item. It's just more about what if there is a situation, an emergency situation where you need to respond financially and now you can't. And of course I was a bit younger then, so most of the people around me were in similar boats as me, so I couldn't really expect as much. And now obviously being older, hopefully, God forbid, if something ever happened and I, for whatever reason, had to max my savings out, I'm sure there'd be people that would be able to help me now. But back then it was like, at that time, you know, everyone's young, everyone's still kind of rebuilding their finances and stuff. And I really, really learned at that moment that that was just a situation I never wanted to find myself in ever again, especially for the fact that the reason I even got bailed out of the situation was by me having to run back to my ex and beg for money. Well, not beg, I asked and he did kindly offer to help. But yeah, like now it's like, okay, if I'd have just paid that parking ticket rather than be stubborn about it with my mum, that would have been the end of it. Now I, I now owe my ex 400 pounds, do you know what I mean? So I think sometimes it's just about kind of like prevention is better than cure is what I took away from that. There were so many opportunities to have prevented that situation. So the first opportunity was actually not just taking my mum's word for it when she said I could stop in a red route when I knew damn well I couldn't. The second time was when the ticket actually came and me being stubborn and kind of pushing it to my mum and being like, oh, you pay for it, knowing that she was so busy, had so many other things going on and I would have needed to really stay on top of her. And then even after that, the second time when the second ticket came again and me still being stubborn about it with my mum when really I could have just paid it at that time or set up that payment arrangement and been done with it. And then also when I, I knew full well that the last payment wasn't taken, but I thought I could chance it. And I thought, oh, well, it's been however many months, it's fine. Also, the time in which the bailiff experience happened versus the time in which that last payment was supposed to go out, it was months before. So this is the thing as well. Sometimes if you think that, you know, certain debts are just going to disappear and you might never hear it again, just be careful because you just don't know. These people will come like thieves in the night and just come out of the blue and be like, yo, where's our money? So yeah, I learned a lot from that situation. And I just really want to encourage people that if you are in a situation where you owe us the money and you've set up repayment arrangements, please try and avoid situations where they're going to sell it on to external debt collection agencies or appeal to the high court to be able to send bailiffs to your house, etc. It's really not a pleasant experience and it's not a situation that you know you want to willingly find yourself in I can look back and laugh now but at that time I said wow is this really my life <laughs> is this really happening to me over a parking ticket I mean I don't know what it's like now I don't know if they still do that in regards to parking tickets I don't know how enforceable certain parking tickets are now I don't know but back then they were militant with it um so yeah, so that was my bailiff experience. Um, I was gonna say if people could share theirs in the comments, but actually, no, like we're, we're, we're praying against it. 
I pray that none of my subscribers have bailiff experiences. But yeah, if you do have similar experiences or stories that you want to share, please do feel free to put them in the comments. Let's talk about it. Let's all learn from one another. Um, stay tuned for my next video in The Rich Chronicles. Um, I haven't quite thought about which story I'm going to tell next, but yeah, I definitely have another similar-ish story. Not a bailiff story, but I definitely have another story of a silly mistake that I've made that has then snowballed into a bigger one. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for my next video.